Three words. Cream cheese brownies. Is this gonna be good? I am very much on the fence about this. Are these flavors that go together? Cream cheese is for bagels. I have of course made brownies. I have consumed a lot of cream cheese. I have never ever put them together. Maybe this is a classic and I just like have completely missed this. Unclear. If you would like to bake this along with me, I'm on page 235 of my favorite cookbook, The Cook's Illustrated Baking Book. I've got the oven on for 325, and this is an 8x8 tin, which I have lined with tin foil, and now I need to grease with butter. First step is to take the all purpose flour, combine it with baking powder and salt. Ah, it's always upsetting, my favorite whisk. It's in the dishwasher, so I have to use the subpar whisk. Probably could have just like added the baking powder and the salt to the bowl that the flour was already in. Here we have four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, which we are going to melt over the stove. Chocolate is temperamental. You need to be very nice to it when you're melting or it will turn on you. The way that we are going to melt this chocolate is by doing it over the stove over a simmering bowl of boiling water. I have a teeny tiny pan behind me and to that I'm gonna add an inch of water. I'm going to put my chocolate into this bowl and make sure that the bottom of the bowl does not come into contact with that water. Do not add any water to the chocolate. It will seize and if you don't already know, you don't want that. Melting this kind of chocolate, you know, we're not tempering chocolate. Nothing crazy is going on here, thank God. But there's going to be carryover cooking, which means that this is hot and the chocolate is going to continue to melt. So you don't have to get it completely melted. It will continue to work even after you take it off the stove. We are ready for the next step. Oh my God. I was supposed to melt the butter with it. Budge. Well, let's add it now. Whoops. Okay, so apparently, we were supposed to melt the butter and the chocolate together. Hopefully this will be okay. Okay, well, start melting butter. I'll let carry over cooking that I was talking about. That was really important right now. Luckily, this butter was incredibly room temperature. It's like really hot in here. And it was already really soft. So look, it's just, it's melting. We did it right all along. Look. All right, now in with the sugar and vanilla. Pretty grainy, if I'm honest. But maybe once we add the eggs, it'll kind of smooth out. Now we are going in with three eggs. One of these eggs is for the cream cheese filling. So smooth, wonderful. Looks really dodgy there for a second. I'm not gonna lie to you. And now in with the dry ingredients. This is our brownie. Now what the heck do we do with this cream cheese? All right, I'm supposed to beat the cream cheese. With what tool? A whisk? That would be whisking. Spatula? Spatula. Eight ounces of very room temperature cream cheese. I'm going to add one and three quarter ounces of sugar, weighing as always, because that's how we do. One yolk and a little bit more vanilla. Making really nice squelching sounds. It's time. This is where the brownie and the cream cheese meet. Here's the method. Half of the brownie mixture is going in our prepared tin, or ish, I'm not gonna measure. I'm gonna take my offset. Now, dollop. It says to do this in spoonfuls, so I'm literally gonna use spoons. Dolloping. Half of the mixture. The rest on top. Should I smooth it? I don't I don't feel like I should smooth it. Let's just give it a wiggle. Obviously, we have exposed dollops. 
four ish. I'm not gonna measure. But I need to re I need to do more dollops, so uh, you know, we'll keep going. And now comes the time for the true artist expression. Taking my offset spatula and swirling through. The cream cheese is harder to move through than the brownie mixture, getting some resistance. Definitely think this is like something that you can overdo. Because I, I, I think the goal is to have some distinctive parts. Okay. You know, not the most attractive thing, but this is going in the oven for 50 minutes to one hour. That is a long bake. Didn't realize. I'm gonna have dessert late tonight. Let's get it in quickly. Jeez, and these need to cool for a long time. We might need to taste these tomorrow. This might be a two day bake. I mean, it has to chill for the, in the fridge for three hours. What am I gonna try these at like 1 a.m.? So as always, we are looking for the indicator, not the time. I am going to be checking on these before the 50 minutes are up looking for the edges to have puffed slightly, the center to feel not quite firm when touched lightly. A toothpick inserted in the center comes out with several moist crumbs attached. So it sounds just basically like it's underbaked. <laughs> We're looking for something where the edges are sort of cooked and everything else kind of feels undercooked. Got it. After just 40 minutes, these cream cheese brownies are done. This needs to sit at room temperature for an hour and a half, and then it needs to chill in the fridge for three hours, which would roughly put us at 1.30 in the morning. So I am going to let this chill at room temperature for an hour and a half, put it in the fridge overnight, and we will taste test this tomorrow. It is now the next day. It is quite a bit later the next day as well. These brownies went into the fridge uh, overnight, so more than the three hours that was recommended by my favorite cookbook. Then they stayed in all day because I kind of forgot about it. And I took them out uh, maybe an hour ago. So well chilled and uh, ready for tasting. I haven't looked yet. Let's hope nothing horrible happens. Oh, I think it looks good. I was reading though, these do need to stay in the fridge. And it also says don't cut them until you're gonna eat them. So I think I might just cut one little piece because I wanna eat the rest later. I'm not really sure what that means. They didn't explain, but it sounded sort of important. How's this work? Uh-oh. All right, we got some good swirlage. I think if I were to do it again, I would try and get sort of more blobs. Why didn't I blob over here? I can't remember now. It seems I, I was heavily blobbage over here, but not over here. In the margins of my favorite cookbook, there are all these really handy tips that I don't always read, but when I do, I'm always impressed with them. And I read this tip, which is how to cut brownies, and let me show you how to do it. I have a metal bench scraper and some spray. Yeah, I mean, cuts well. Bench scraper method approved. It's now time for my favorite part, grading the recipe. Every time I make a new recipe from my favorite cookbook, I give it a grade using the OWL grading system from Harry Potter because here we celebrate nerdiness and there's plenty of it to go around. Where will these brownies land? There's only one way to find out, but I need a little help. I'm gonna bring in my live-in taste tester to help me try out these cream cheese brownies. Taste tester, hello. Hello. Thank you for joining. Have you ever had a cream cheese brownie? Probably. I don't know that brownie and cream cheese go together for me, but let's find out, cheers. Give me your thoughts. I'm gonna get some milk. Stay there while I get milk. That's better than I thought it would be. Oh, go ahead. I do think you'd be better off if the cream cheese was more swirled in. Quite rich. Quite rich. The milk is helping. This is not a fudgy brownie. This for me is leveling much more towards cakey brownie. The cream cheese really adds moisture and richness and it counteracts the cakiness with some overly fudgy stuff and it balances out to a good brownie consistency. This is interesting. This is not what I want out of a brownie. If you're like, I'm gonna make brownies, and I'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't want you to make go make this recipe. It tastes like maybe you like didn't melt the butter at the right time. Shut up! <laughs> All right, what's your grade for this one? What are my choices? You tell us. 
It goes O and then E and then A, right? And then? Um, P something T. D. Forget that it's a cream cheese brownie. Other kinds of brownies, where does this land for you? It's like a strong A+. Plus. Up against all of the ways that you can eat a brownie, this isn't my final grade, but up against all of the brownie recipes, this is a P. Your recommendation to me is an E? I could agree to A, but I'm not gonna agree to P. <sighs> not in this house. Well, what does A stand for? Acceptable. A stands for acceptable. Yeah. Would you describe this as an unacceptable brownie? All right, cream cheese brownies. Hey. I mean, you can give it a B if you want to give it a P, but I think you'd be making a massive mistake that you would always regret. Millions of people are going to watch this. <laughs>